What's up everybody and welcome back to the GSP YouTube channel. Uh, I think this is going to be a really good video for a lot of folks to step-by-step -step guide into doing a firmware update on your Holly product. Uh, in this case we're going to use my Corvette. Uh, it's got a Terminator X on it. This pretty much applies to all of your HP and Dominator stuff as well but um, this will work great for for most of the Terminator X guys. It's step-by-step -step on what I'm going to do to my own car. So the way that this deal works, if you've had a, a Terminator X, uh, oh gosh, probably two years now, they are going to be on V2 software when they come to you. But in my case, um, I actually got one pretty early on and have got V1 software still on it. So I'm going to do a double upgrade today. We're going to upgrade the firmware and I'm also going to do a software upgrade or update, whatever you want to call it, um, with my uh tune file so it's it's pretty easy to do you literally just simply open up uh, your tune file in the v2 software and it'll automatically update but we'll go over a few of the prerequisites now and can make sure that your stuff is all ready to go before you go start clicking buttons and have any issues with it so let's go get in the car okay so uh few prereqs that we've got to do before we actually do this update is um, first off we want to make sure that the battery is topped off and is in good shape we don't want to have a battery that's got 10 or 11 volts and is half discharged that's going to be providing inadequate voltage to the ECU and could potentially cause you some problems we're not going to do that so we're going to verify that our voltage is good before we get started I would say Anything over 12, 3, 12, 4 on a, on a obviously on a 12 volt system is is pretty good. Love it if you can get 12.6. Uh, second thing is, this is probably the most important one. I see this happen all the time. Be sure that the only thing that is plugged into the CAN connection is the laptop cable. Uh, or if you're using a uh, handheld to do this, you can make sure it's just the handheld, but that's going to be a different video. This is going to be focusing on the laptop portion of this. Um, if you have one of those uh, boxes that actually has the ability to switch all of your other CAN devices off, it's a splitter box, it has a little switch on it. If you have one of those boxes, it's fine. Just make sure that the laptop is plugged into the correct port and that you have the switch flipped. So basically what we want to make sure is that we're not sending this firmware update to things like dashes uh, or I.O. boxes or anything like that. It needs to go directly to the ECU and only to the ECU. So that's going to be a, a really big kicker. If you try to do this with a dash or a Dakota digital box or anything like that, it's going to fail and it's going to drive you nuts. Uh, if it does fail, it's not the end of the world, but just know that that will absolutely cause it to fail every single time. So once we've got that set up, I'm going to go ahead and get the laptop out and we will get started on uh, going through what the steps are to make sure that we do this right. The last prereq that I need to go through on the laptop is we want to make sure that we save the tune that's on the car before we ever do any of this work. Because when you do a firmware update, it's basically like starting over from scratch with an ECU. You're, you, you clear it completely out, it's got completely new um, structure to the to the software basically is, is what we're what we're putting on this thing so we want to make sure that it is updated um, correctly and also that we have our old file to put back on once it is all right so let's whip out the laptop and get started all right guys we've got our software pulled up here and now we need to extract the tune off the car before we do anything else we want to make sure that we have that information before we make any more moves so I'm in my V1 software, because remember we're doing a, a double update here, we're updating software and firmware. If you're only doing the firmware portion of this, uh, just ignore the software change, but all of that's going to stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my key on, but not try to start the car. And I'm going to go ahead and click my USB link here, and my configuration set for next Max, that's fine. All it is is just linking to the ECU, let me turn the radio off. Open up your iHeart Radio app, tap the red microphone, and look. All right. So we're synced up. We've got our tune in here. Everything is currently live. We're looking at our data kind of fluctuate a little bit. And what we want to do now is just simply go offline and hit File, Save As. And that simply is going to be what we're, what we're pulling off of here today. So I'm going to change my date to the current date. Okay, 
yes, I want to continue there. That's something I got going on in the background. Don't worry about that. Okay, so we've got our key on. Our laptop's the only thing that's connected. And we're going to go ahead, and this is where we do the firmware update. All right, so to do the update, we're going to go to the sync menu right here and use the little drop down arrow. We're going to click upgrade firmware, and it's going to give us a little warning here. But we have to actually find the file, and the file in this case that we want to use is so we're going to go into Terminator XV2, find our firmware folder in this SNEFI uh, version 2 build 80 is what we're looking for there. And that, that's going to be the firmware file. We can double click that and we'll get the firmware update going. Awesome. There we go. So you're going to have to sit here and watch this thing flash for a couple minutes. It's got some number of bits to put in and it takes a couple minutes and you'll see the little green bar go from left to right. No big deal. Just make sure that your laptop's got a good battery, that the car's got good battery, all those things are done, and you'll be fine. Alright, so I'm going to let this thing flash, and then uh, we'll come back towards the end. Okay, just like that, we're all done. Flash was successful. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to turn it off. This is the part where we go back. I'm going to switch to my V2 software. All right, so now we're in V2. And you remember from the last time that uh, basically I told you we're going to clear the ECU. It's like starting from scratch. So this actually applies if like you got a tune from me or a tune from anybody else and you want to just put a tune on for the first time and skip the wizard. This is how you do it. So we're going to key on. And I'm going to cycle the USB stick so that we get a online option. Okay, there we go. So USB link. And basically nobody's home right now because the, t the, the file has a uh, not been uploaded so it's gonna basically say sync but there's nothing here so what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go to file open global file so this is where you would get any file that, that you want to use as a global file on, on the car I'm gonna go offline because I gotta be offline to upload it yeah see it's telling me I can't do it in online mode so we're gonna go offline file open global file and I'm gonna go to a little different place because I'm going to go get my file from Terminator X, the one that I saved. So this is going to be C6 version 71, today's date. I'm going to open that one, and I'm not going to save changes to anything. And then it's going to say, hey, this is a V1 file. Do you want it to be V2? And I'm going to say yes. And it's going to update all of my ICF's individual configuration files and bring them all up to date for V2. So now with the key on, I'm going to hit USB link, and it's going to tell me I need to do a, a TPS auto set before startup. That's fine. And I'm going to send all this to the ECU. So we're uploading the tune with V2 for the first time. This is all as if you had a brand new Terminator X. And I'm going to say OK. And now we need to do that TPS auto set, right? So remember, that's here. TPS auto set, same menu as our upgrade firmware. And it's going to say, make sure you've done an ignition cycle. So I'm actually going to hit cancel. Just to make sure, I'm going to cycle the ignition, key off, key back on. We're going to do that one more time. TPS auto set. Please ensure you've done the ignition cycle. And we have done that. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so we're going to hit start. I'm going to push the pedal all the way down, all the way back up, all the way down, all the way back up. Okay, just like that, done. TPS auto set was successful. So now, we should be able to just fire this thing right back up in V2, just like we did with V1, except for now we've got upgraded firmware and software, and the cool part about that is we got all the updates that come along with that. If you guys have used V1 and then switched to V2, you know that one of my favorite things at least to use is like, if I wanna grab this section of cells, I can hit 
control and either up or right to raise them or lower them. Here's the, that, that was in, in both of the softwares, but here's the cool part. If I want to offset those by five, instead of having to right click and hit offset selected, you see this little O right here? All I've got to do is I can highlight a set of cells and hit the O key. And now I can say plus five and enter. And all of a sudden it adds five to them. And I go, oh, well, I don't want that actually. So I'm going to hit O minus five, enter, pulls it right back out. That works for all these functions. You can fill rows, columns, fill uh, in both directions, offset and smooth, all with single key functions. And, and I, honestly, I don't even want to use V1 anymore, which is exactly why I updated. And I'm trying to move everybody that I'm working with to V2 just simply because I'm lazy and I want to be able to use those functions as key functions. So, all right, that's basically it. Last thing, but uh, is probably the most important, is let's fire the car up and just make sure that it runs, right? Make sure that we did everything right. Clutch is pressed. Just like that, fires right up. And you can see we're idling nicely and our alternator is now pulling us up to charge. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna click it off. That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, nothing too too terrible with the uh, with the laptop. The same steps still apply with the handheld, but the buttons are in a few different places. So I'll I'll go over that one in a video as soon as I can. But um, yeah, that's it. Firmware update with the laptop. Hope you have a, guys have a good one, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.